Hello everyone, welcome to the teaching show. In this video, we are going to take another problem which I have taken from GATE exam 2003 and it is on offset analysis. So, let's directly start the problem. Uh, I will explain the problem to you and the problem statement is given in the description box. Okay, so uh, over here we are burning methane with excess of air and methane is present along with nitrogen. It is given that 80% is methane and 20% is nitrogen. So we are taking a basis as 80 moles of methane and 20 moles of nitrogen that is 100 moles of your incoming uh, fuel. Okay. Then you have 20% excess air. Air will have oxygen and nitrogen. We don't know how much we are using so I am going to give it by N1 and N2 variable. Then the products of combustion are CO2, CO, H2O and then unburnt uh, or uh, uh, unutilized oxygen and nitrogen. Okay, so here we get this idea that um, methane is burning to give carbon dioxide as well as carbon monoxide. Further in the problem it is given that 80% of the combustible that is 80% of the methane it burns to give you carbon dioxide and the remaining combustible it gives you carbon monoxide. Okay, so that is one process specification which is given. Second process specification which is given is that you are using 20% excess air. So that is the second process specification and I told you that in any combustion problem you can you also have a third problem specification that is O2 to N2 ratio in the air is fixed. Okay, so I have three process specifications which I have listed here. Uh, let's do degree of freedom analysis for the atomic species balance uh, because I am going to use that. This is a reaction which is taking place and atomic species balance is the right choice. Okay, so let's quickly do degree of freedom analysis. How many unknowns do you have? N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, N7. So there are 7 unknown variables. Number of atomic species balance, independent atomic species balance which I can write are carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So they are three in number. I have one inert that is nitrogen which is not taking part in the reaction. So I can write one inert balance that is one nitrogen balance. And then I have three process specifications which I have told you. So 7 minus 3 minus 1 minus 3. So my degree of freedom it comes out to be equal to 0. So this problem is solvable. I can find out all these variables and from that uh, the problem asks you to calculate what will be the offset analysis in volume percent. So let's start this problem. I told you uh, any such problem always try to start with either inert balance or process specification. Since we don't know how much nitrogen is going in so we cannot take inert balance directly. So let's start with process specifications first. So I have 20% excess air. Let's do that. So, you remember the formula for percentage excess. So, percentage excess that is equal to O2 which is going in that is N1 minus O2 which is theoretically required. So, I am just going to write O2 theoretical divided by O2 theoretical into 100 and that is given as 20%. In order to find out N1, okay, because this is one of the equation, I have to first find out what is theoretical amount of oxygen which is required. And what is the theoretical amount of oxygen which is required? It is the oxygen which is required for complete combustion of methane to carbon dioxide. So let's write down the equation first. So if methane, it undergoes complete combustion to give you carbon dioxide and water, balance this equation okay so one mole of methane requires two mole of oxygen for complete combustion okay so if i have 80 moles of methane the theoretical amount of oxygen which will be required is 80 times 2 that will be 160 moles so i have the theoretical requirement for oxygen is 160 moles okay so this is the equation and from this equation I can calculate what is the N1 that is the amount of oxygen which is going in 
If I go and calculate that, I find this as 192 moles. Let me update my flow chart. Okay. Now, as soon as I know N1, because I know the ratio of N2 by N1, what was that? 3.76 times N1. So, I know what is N2? That is equal to 3.76 times N1. I have told you in uh, lecture 34 from where it comes. Okay, that, that is just the ratio of 0.79 divided by 0.21. That is the respective percentages of nitrogen and oxygen in air which we are taking. Okay, so if I do this, I get N2. Just multiply 192 by 376 and you get 721. So you get 721.92 moles. Okay. So two of the variables I have calculated N1 and N2 using my two process specifications. So N2 is 721.92 moles. Okay. Now I am going to use my third process specification which says that 80% of methane it burns to give carbon dioxide. And 20% gives you carbon monoxide. Let's write down the equation for methane burning to give you carbon monoxide and water. What do you find? 1 mole burns to give 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Similarly in this reaction, 1 mole of methane burns to give you 1 mole of carbon monoxide. So what is happening is that if you have like 80 moles, okay, out of that, 80% is burning to give you CO2 and 20% is burning to give you CO. What will be the ratio of CO2 to CO? It will again be 80 is to 20. Okay. So, I know the ratio of how much CO2 is being formed to the how much CO being formed. Okay. So, I have a relation between N3 and N4 and that is N3 is equal to 4 times N4. 80 by 20 times N4. So, I have converted my third process specification in terms of these variables. Okay. So, this is one equation which I get. I am going to write it over here. N3 is equal to 4 times N4. Okay. So, this is the equation which I get from the third process specification. Now, what I will do is, let me take now inert balance because all the three process specifications we are done with. Now, I am going to take an inert balance. Simply, what it will be? In is equal to out. So, out is N7. That should be equal to in which is going in. That is N2 plus 20. So, 721.92 plus 20 moles. So, that is 741.92 moles. So, I have calculated N7. I am going to update my flow chart. Another variable is now known. Now, what is left? Now, I am going to take carbon, oxygen and hydrogen balance. Okay. So, first of all, I will take carbon balance. What is my carbon balance? Let's see. In is equal to out because it is atomic species balance. So, in should be equal to out. How much is going in? 80. So, 80 moles of carbon atom are going in. That is equal to N3 moles coming out as CO2 plus N4 moles coming out as CO. But I know the relation between N3 and N4. N3 is 4 times N4. So I can write this equation as N3 is equal to 4 times N4 plus N4 that is equal to 5 N4 or my N4 is equal to 16 moles. So my N3 should be equal to 4 times 16 that is 64 moles. I should make 4 properly. Okay. So I have 64 moles. So I have cal calculated two more variables. One using the carbon balance. Okay. And also one of the process specification which was the third process specification. So I have now the values of N3 and N4. What is N3? Let's update our flow chart. So this is 64 moles. This is 16 moles. Okay. So now two of the variables are remaining and we have two more equations left. So let's take them. First of all, I am going to take uh, hydrogen balance. Okay. Hydrogen going in that is equal to 80 times 4. 
that should be equal to hydrogen which is coming out. It is coming out only in water. So that should be equal to 2 times N5 or I can calculate my N5 as calculate it and tell me what will be N5 that is equal to 80 times 2 because 2 gets cancelled so 160 moles. Okay. So I have N5 is equal to 160 moles that you get from your hydrogen balance. The only thing which is remaining is now oxygen balance. So let's take that. Okay. So my O balance now it gives me what is going in 2 times 192 that is the number of moles of oxygen atom which are going in that should be equal to 2 times N3 that is 64 plus N4 that is equal to 16 plus N5 plus 2 times N6. So if I solve this for N6 I get the value of N6 as uh, 40 moles. Okay. So now the problem is solved. I have all the unknowns. So now you can calculate anything which they ask in the problem. In the problem it was asked what is the Orset analysis. Okay. So for Orset analysis always remember that it is based on the dry basis. So we are not going to include our water for calculating our Orset analysis. After that whatever it is left you just add them. So I am going to add what are the number of moles of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxygen and nitrogen. So total number of moles they come out to be 861.92. So for Orset, what, what your Orset analysis will be on the volume percent basis? It will be the same as mole percent base. So CO2 percentage will be 64 divided by the total number of moles that are coming out on dry basis multiplied by 100. Similarly, CO will be 16 divided by total number of moles into 100. For uh, oxygen, that is equal to 40 divided by 861.92 into 100. And nitrogen, that is equal to 741.92 divided by 861.92 into 100. So if you calculate these values, you get your Orset analysis, 7.42% of carbon dioxide, 1.85% of carbon monoxide, oxygen forms 4.64% and nitrogen is the maxima and that is 86.07%. So this gives you your Orset analysis for the flue gases. Always remember when you have been asked offset analysis, don't include water because it is on the dry basis. So the problem is solved. This problem gives you, you know, four options and you have to take which one gives you the correct offset analysis. So the problem is solved. It's very easy. First of all, in solving any problem on material balance, with or without reaction, always try to figure out which balance you are going to use. Then all, uh, do degree of freedom analysis. This helps you in figuring out how many equations do you have and in which sequence you are going to solve it. So once I figured out how many equations I had, I could uh, very quickly solve it without wasting my time and uh, get the answer, required answer. So thanks for watching and if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thank you very much.